Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this RedGamingTech.com video, let's discuss a mysterious AMD Radeon graphics card, which is actually outperforming NVIDIA's RTX 2080 Ti. So it's getting close to 9pm here in the UK, and I was just finishing up for the evening, but a couple of you sent me links to a Reddit thread where a user there has discovered this mysterious entry on the OpenVR benchmark database. Um, credit to Much Childs over at Reddit, by the way, for this discovery. So you will notice that it is listed as purely AMD Radeon graphics. There is no statement regarding the model of the card. Now, it's worth noting that it's second in the rankings because it's being tested at 1512 by 1680. This is for the HTC Vive MW, MV excuse me, at 90 Hz. And furthermore, another thing that's rather interesting is that the CPU it's being tested with appears to be the Ryzen 7 4800H. At least that's what the OPN number is. But the thing that's kind of weird is that the clock frequency is not uh, what you would expect. Which means that either it's a different variant of the 4800H, it's an engineering sample, or something else is going on that we, of course, can only speculate on. As always, test setups aren't exactly what you would expect. Like, you would expect a high-end GPU to be tested with, like, a 3900X, or, you know, a 9900K, or something like that. But very frequently, this is not what actually happens, because they just kind of are testing to see if the uh, GPU works oftentimes and whether there's like errors in like rendering or what have you. So this unknown GPU scores 103 FPS, slightly over that, but let's just uh, round it uh, down for this video. Meanwhile, the RTX 2080 Ti, the fastest score on the very same leaderboard, scores only 88 FPS. Now, that represents around a 17% difference over the RTX 2080 Ti, and the other thing that's really interesting is that this specific benchmark tends to favour the GeForce uh, line of GPUs. Uh, basically, it's just a better optimised. It is definitely possible it is being misdetected, or someone is, uh, let's say, tricking the benchmark to uh, create this excitement. After all, we do know that uh, AMD did not formally announce the card or provide any details of the second generation of RDNA at their CES event. However, uh, a couple of days later, we saw an interview which was hosted on Anantech. I covered this uh, yesterday, I believe. And, of course, Lisa Sue there did confirm that Big Narve does exist. Now, this is an engineering sample. Let's proceed with the assumption that it is a Big Narve. Most likely, if it's an engineering sample, there are several potential possibilities. One, that the drivers themselves are not optimised, which obviously is not the best thing for performance. Secondly, we don't know what the GPU is boosting to. So, for example, if it is an engineering sample, and let's just say that the uh, target clock frequency is 2 gigahertz. I don't know if that's the case, but let's just use 2 gigahertz. It may only be boosting to 15 or 16 or 1700 megahertz because, once again, it's an engineering sample. There could also be errors, maybe, in the memory controllers or what have you. So, because of that, maybe they're not running the memory as fast as possible. Now, I'm not saying this is the case. Maybe this does represent the highest end performance of this particular SKU. But it is worth noting that it potentially may not be. So the question is though, how high in the performance stack is this particular card? And are there any other cards which are faster? So let's just for a moment assume that this is the big Nave card based on RDNA 2. Okay, does this represent the pinnacle of performance? In other words, AMD are outperforming the RTX 2080 Ti by around 20%. Or is there a card which goes even faster, which outperforms the Ti by, let's say, 40%, 50%? These are definitely questions that we just can't answer right now. So, for example, um, we've seen in drivers that the Narve 21 card exists and the Narve 23. 
I've been told that Nave 23 is the highest performance tier, but at the end of the day, it could be that Nave 21 is the highest performance card. But regardless of that, which of those two code names is this particular GPU? It's going to be really interesting to see also what AMD's pricing strategy is going to be, particularly if they have a GPU which is roughly on par um, with the RTX 2080 Ti or a little bit faster. Are they going to seek to undercut NVIDIA significantly? I must say, on that front, given the pricing of both the RX 5500 and RX 5600, I am a little concerned that we won't see a drastic price difference between an equivalent AMD high-end GPU and an equivalent NVIDIA uh, high-end GPU. And that's, by the way, not throwing shade at AMD. I think that uh, we need to see a reduction in price on a GPU's just period. That's just my opinion, though. You might recall that in a video I put out a couple of days ago, uh, actually, it's more than a couple of days ago now, it was uh, just before CES, I stated that I was pretty certain that the big Nave cards would not be at CES. My source told me that not only would they not be at CES, but they would be named the RX uh, 6000 series, and that, of course, they would be based on the second generation of RDNA architecture, and that the GPUs will launch in summer. Which would make sense, uh, a summer launch, that is, if they are starting to test the cards now, of course, we don't know how long they have been testing these GPUs. We have seen them in drivers, so once again, we don't know how far along the uh, silicon is in terms of production. We've also seen that rather recent rumour as well, uh, which states that the uh, high-end Nave cards are going to be up to twice as fast as uh, Nave 10, and they would sport an absolutely humongous die over 500mm squared, and of course have a correspondingly large uh, memory bus plus super fast memory. It's going to be fascinating to see how all of this plays out though, particularly given all of the rumours concerning Ampere and the next generation GeForce cards. It'll also be interesting to see what the timeline of launches is between both AMD and NVIDIA. I'm really hoping that AMD are able to compete against NVIDIA uh, for the next generation, and I'm also um, rather interested to see how the ray tracing side of the equation plays out, given that, of course, both next generation consoles will have AMD GPUs, and we definitely know that the Xbox has an AMD implemented ray tracing solution. While the idea of having up to 80 compute units is certainly exciting and is interesting in terms of pure performance to just brute force it, efficiency is also just as important. Um, AMD have made great uh, strides for this. We see a slide for AMD's uh, RDNA, which was uh, provided just as the GPUs launched, and it calls uh, RDNA delivers same power, greater performance. And according to AMD, we see a greater performance of around 50% over the GCN architecture. And you can see how that breaks down in terms of per clock enhancements, the 7nm process, as well as design frequency and power improvements. So AMD did get an awful lot out of the 7nm process. I'm sure you'll agree though that NVIDIA really build efficient architectures and it's really amazing what they've squeezed out of the 12nm process with Turing. They've done an amazing job and given that they still have the 7nm trump card to play, yeah, I think AMD just can't rest on its laurels. Now certainly the shift to uh, 7nm plus is going to be a nice benefit to them. They're going to get around 10% there. But I am hearing that the architecture itself is designed to be more efficient. To clarify, RDNA 2 is not just RDNA 1, albeit with, let's say, hybrid ray tracing slapped on. It does have some inherent changes, and I'm hearing as well that it does run at higher clock frequencies. So, anyway... That's a bit of a shorter video than normal today, but I really wanted to discuss this topic because I've already gotten multiple emails regarding it and uh, several DMs on Twitter and a couple of Facebook messages as well. So I'd like to thank you all for thinking of me and sending me the correspondence. It is 
are highly appreciated and thank you very much for the support. I'm going to get going now though because it's really late here in the UK and I still need to edit the video. But I wish you an amazing day. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.